Welcome to Our Girl Relationships. On this channel, we discuss day-to-day -day problems people face in their lives. Let's start with the video. My brother and I moved to England a couple of weeks ago to finish our studies and possibly make a perfect life for ourselves and our single mother. Our mother sent us with the sole purpose of studying and working hard for ourselves as she could barely afford to have us travel here, let alone pay for the first few months of our studies, leaving the rest of the college tuition for each of us to handle. I'm studying medicine and working two jobs as a night shift retail employee. I take the quiet times of the night into an advantage by working online as a freelancer to make extra money for rent and necessities. I study most of the day and hardly get to rest or sit back and enjoy the fact that I'm living my dream. However, it's something that I enjoy and take pride in. I noticed that my work ethic and willingness to succeed were being taken advantage of. My relationship with my brother has always been rather lovely and I cared for him more than sisters usually do. I'm a support system for him emotionally, physically, and sometimes even financially, despite being older than me by five years. But ever since we moved abroad, I've been finding it extremely difficult to balance life as a medical student, which already consumes a buttload of time and effort, when my brother has been coming up to me to ask for some extra cash or pocket money while I'm lingering around rock bottom. I've been feeling irritated and the need to reject him. Nevertheless, I still reach into my purse and hand him over whatever isn't precisely calculated to pay for bills or necessities. The fact that I'm so anxious about not making it financially and worrying about paying my college tuition on time has led me to become cautious about what I spend and where my money's going, which is why I immediately picked up on the scraps of change that started going missing from my purse. I wouldn't have thought it to be more than me losing them carelessly, which is already highly uncommon. If they hadn't started mounting up to large bills and money sums that left me without commutes or lunch at university. I let these events take place for quite some time as that has always been my brother's nature to make money when he needed it, even if it meant selling his belongings or the people around him. I know that it's incredibly toxic and unkind of behavior to return to the people that you love and care about but I cared about him too much to let money get between us, or so it has always been. It wasn't a matter of money anymore. It directly and largely influenced the quality of my life and possibly crippled my ability to pay for college tuition. My fury was starting to get out of control when I noticed that tens of euros and 20s and even 50 euro bills that I was planning to deposit into my tuition bank account started going missing from my purse whenever my brother and I would be home the same time. One day, after having finished an extra shift at the shop because I used my nap time studying that day, I was extremely excited as I got paid for the month and the extra shifts at the same time, which isn't usually the case as I mostly get paid in small chunks. I walked myself home that day in an excellent mood thinking about how I would chunk up my money and how much I'd deposit into the bank account, etc. Feeling incredibly proud to hold the fruit of my efforts in my hands. I went home and informed him that I'd finally gotten paid, lying about the exact money sum so he wouldn't start leeching immediately but offering takeout and celebrating the event to the extent that I could. After we had a rather nice meal while watching the TV, I excused myself to my room and took the time to shower and rinse off the exhaustion before bedtime. I woke up the following morning with a plan in mind, split up the money and deposited it into the bank account so I wouldn't spend it recklessly and randomly. I was slapped with rage and hatred the moment I opened my purse and found it devoid of any bills or money at all. Everything was gone. I was rightfully enraged and rang my brother about a million times without response. Still highly mad, I practically ran to his workplace and demanded that his boss lets me speak to him. To my happy surprise, he informed me that he had quit his job months ago and, and that he no longer had any information regarding his whereabouts. I called in sick that day, sat at home pacing back and forth, fidgeting and spinning around myself as anxiety consumed my thought and rage fueled them. I spun around like a possessed woman the moment the door opened and all hell broke loose. He stood at the door as if he'd done nothing wrong, a trick he had mastered through the years of stealing and lying, then looping that cycle. I angrily asked that he give me my money back and that it'll be the last penny he'd ever receive from me and made sure to let him know everything I had ever thought of him and spared him no insults or negative descriptions that only fits his actions. 
He denied that he ever saw or took any money out. I was certain that I had it when I came home because I paid for the food and I looked in every single nook and crevice in the house as I anxiously sat around the house that day. After he played the games he usually does to get out of sticky situations, screaming and making a fuss or playing the victim and accusing me of falsely accusing him, he threatened to leave the house as one of his tactics, claiming that I always do this to him and that I never treat him properly, and even going as far as saying that I'm mentally abusive and taking advantage of his patience and kindness to me. When he threatened to walk out the door and never come back, I dared him to do so, knowing that even if he did, he'd likely be back in a few hours or days at most. I asked him to leave the keys at the table and heard him slam the door on his way out. I struggled for a few weeks to make up the money he took that day and finally stabilized myself again. I'm not gonna lie, I barely got the free time to think about what had happened, but whenever I did, my heart ached to know that he might never come back and I even entertained the idea that I might be the bad guy in the situation. Update. A few months had passed since I last saw my brother and my mother was flying in to visit us. I dreaded her arrival as I knew she would force a gathering on us and we were both unexcited for that idea as neither of us had attempted to contact the other. As expected, my mother demanded that we all sit and have dinner together in a restaurant and talk through things. However, I strongly advised her against it, as I knew him like the back of my hand and could narrate what would happen in detail before we even sat to have dinner. And of course, things took the turn that I had expected. He played all his manipulative and false cards, trying to slither himself out of responsibility. I didn't even mention the fact that I'd been sent reports of my credit card money being spent in bar or the drug wrappers I found washed away with laundry or that I'd visited his boss that day and he told me that his brother had been living jobless for months. Apparently, according to him, he had gotten his life around in those months, found proper roommates, earned an excellent job, and was now working days in and nights out to make the money he needed for uni. He said he has enough money to travel around with friends and have the best time of his life. He made sure to emphasize his liberation from me as if I wasn't the one funding his fun and survival before I had enough of him sneaking around, putting my college experience in danger. I let him have the glory of showing off to my mom how much better he was than me because I knew that deep down she was just as aware of his lies and the lack of truth in his statements as I was. Only she chose to put up with it because he's her son and I'm learning that I have no one in the world other than my mom. I'm not sure if the way I kicked him out was too cruel or if I should have made an effort in trying to restore my relationship with him. I'm not sure how much better I could have handled the situation. Still, I could tell that my mom resented me in a way. She always thought I saw myself as better than him, which isn't true. I can identify that I'm putting in more effort to improve, and the only reason I care to say that is because I genuinely care about what my mother thinks of me. It pains me to know that even when I try to do no wrong, I get wronged and feel anxious constantly overthinking things. I hope that I've made it very clear that I just don't want to ruin my life because of someone else's inability to control their actions and take responsibility for themselves. I hope that his life has gotten better the way he claims that it did because, contrary to what he thinks, it wouldn't make me feel bad. It would help me understand that what happened that night turned both of our lives for the better in a way I didn't directly intend but will undoubtedly grow grateful for. Next story. Okay, so we've been married for five years, dating for seven. At the beginning of our relationship, I was doing prerequisites to get into a nursing program. I ended up going to a two-year community college to get my associates and then started work as a nurse around the time we got married. My income went from about $40,000 a year working in a call center to about $60,000 a year working at a hospital. So it was a huge improvement. My husband at the time was happy for me. Now, to give a little bit of background, he works in trade like plumbing or electricity or steel, something like that. So he makes good money, about 80,000 a year. He's always been the higher earner and did not need a degree to do his job, which is amazing. I wish I didn't have to waste so long in school and pay so much money to do what I do. With graduation coming up, I've noticed him making snarky remarks like, when I made a statement that I was excited to graduate, he said, I don't know why, having a bachelor's is pretty much pointless anyway. I don't even see the need for it. You're already a nurse. So that kind of brought me down a little bit. 
Also, I've been discussing with him going into more of a specialty at work. This would mean I would make more money. My ideal job would be quite easy for me to get now with a bachelor's and it would put me between 90 to 100,000 a year. Ever since we've had this discussion, he's been cold to me. He has said things like, well, are you sure you can do that job? It sounds hard. Maybe you should just stay where you're at. When I mentioned the hospital I want to work is about 45 minutes away, all he could talk about was how difficult the commute would be and me getting stuck in snowstorms on the way or something. He's just being a huge downer about it. I also mentioned to someone recently that I was thinking about going back after I was done with my bachelor's to possibly get my master's in nursing education so I can teach nursing school someday. He was standing next to me when I said this and he made a huge exasperated sigh and rolled his eyes. I don't understand. He's always been happy and supportive of me. But now I feel like I have overstepped an invisible boundary that I didn't know existed. I feel like since I make more money than him, he's somehow taking it personally which is confusing because it's not like I'm spending a ton of money on myself. The money is going to go into our savings and go into our house or go towards us traveling. I've told him this and it doesn't seem to make a difference. I just don't know what to do or say to make him realize how hurtful he's being. You didn't overstep an invisible boundary. Get your masters, go to work at that hospital, do it all. He's jealous that you can and will do better than him, so he's making these remarks to keep you in a lower place. To him, you're becoming more ambitious than he is. You're reaching for the stars, you're wanting more. He thinks you'll leave him behind and he'll lose his status as the high earner man of the house. This is common in a relationship when a woman wants more for herself. The higher you climb, the worse he'll treat you. This does not mean that you give up to please him because that's what he wants. This means you keep going after what you want and if he keeps getting annoying about it and won't work on his insecurities, you leave. I could have written this 10 years ago only with different degrees. What I realized is my husband wanted me to stay below him in income despite constantly saying he supported me and was proud of me. When I landed a great job making twice what he made, he had an affair with someone making what I used to make and ultimately married her. What could I have done differently? Talked about it and probed his insecurities. Went to therapy. Something. I just ducked and hoped it would pass and it didn't. This isn't on you. You're just living your best life. I would try talking about it or therapy though. Hindsight sucks. You guys are married and you need to be able to communicate. Next time he has a very obvious reaction to your success, point it out and straight up ask him. Does it bother you? You have reactions each time I talk about getting a higher education or going higher in my career. Is there something about it that we need to discuss? If he says no, then either he's being petty or he doesn't know how to address his emotions. In that case, just say right now, I'm not feeling supported by you in my career choices, which I am making for myself and for the betterment of our family. I've always loved how much you support me while I'm trying new things and I would love it if you could be supportive of me now. If it's going to be an issue, then we need to discuss it. The ball is in his court then. You stated you notice an issue and further stated what you need from him and your expectations. You've also kept a door open for more communication and set up the next step for if he does have a problem and doesn't know how to vocalize it at that moment by stating he can talk to you at a nebulous later date. If he ends up still being petty, unsupportive, etc., while you're continuing to strive and thrive, then you need to explain that this is becoming an even bigger issue and that you're married because you wanted a teammate who will support you, not a rival who dislikes your success. If he can't get with the program, then you need counseling as a couple. For what it's worth, you should absolutely be proud of yourself and your accomplishments. You're doing exactly what I said earlier, striving and thriving. Good work, keep it going. Next story. I finally got my own apartment. I never lived on my own. I have a horrible relationship with my mother and she messes with me every chance she gets. Me and my sister both wanted to get a place together, but she left me a few years ago to live with her boyfriend. He would lie here or there about moving out. Like, no, I didn't move out and eventually she stopped coming home. She then stopped answering my phone calls. She was finally happy to leave my mom's abusive house and I guess felt guilty for leaving me. It's been three to four years since she moved out and since then my mother has made my life hell on earth. Fast forward to getting my apartment. My sister is having issues with the boyfriend she moved in with. 
They're pretty toxic. My sister is working on getting a place through a program. She's unemployed. She has medical issues. I told her about my place. She's been asking me about it. She now starts saying things like her situation is worse with living with her boyfriend than living with mom when I had to go through torture three to four years and she was living peacefully. Her and her man have been having issues for a year. I finally got my peace and a safe place. I already moved in, but I'm keeping it a secret. She asked and I told her December 1st. She then says she can't take living with him and stated she would move all her stuff into storage and possibly live there till she gets her place. The problem is that she doesn't know when it will be. Why all of a sudden I tell you a month away and she starts pulling this? She knows a month is right around the corner so she's putting herself in a position that puts me in a hard spot. You guys have been having problems so why now? It's been a year but as soon as I get my place you start trying to do things like this because you're expecting to also move in with me and I don't want her to. When I was hopeless by myself nobody cared. What do you guys think? Don't let your sister strong arm her way into your life. Your mom manipulated and abused you and now your sister is using the same tactics on you that she knows worked for your mom. Just say you can't let her move in and refuse to answer any further questions from her. You don't owe her a home. She ghosted you when you needed her and now I suggest you do the same. No is a complete sentence. Say it and mean it. She'll lie and tantrum about it. You just keep saying no. Don't explain yourself, just tell her she can't live without you. Don't spend your life moving from one manipulative woman to another. Absolutely don't let her move in. Stay by yourself and get away from all the stress and torture because my gut tells me, just from your post, that your sister will not give you space until you put your foot down. Don't let her come close because she will not move out ever again. Enjoy your life the way you want to. Don't let her visit, stay over, whatever. I get the feeling you will never have peace if you don't form very strict boundaries. Beware of family thinking they have rights to you. This includes money, lodging, and acts of service as a general rule. You will never get back what you give. You already have a feel of what this will be a hardship to you. My suggestion is to help her in ways that help her without her moving in as then it can be much harder to get her back out and she will have tenant rights to your place based on being there. Find a caseworker or shelter, anything that may help her move forward without rights to you, financially supporting her as it will be hard to stop. It can be hard dealing with family to draw those lines, but if you're not in a place to help her mentally, financially, or even if you do not want to do it, no one has right to you. I wish you luck and a bright future.